straight arms is a technique you'll want to use early on when you start climbing, as well as on pumpy boulders when you can. Essentially, you try to climb without bending your arms too much. When you first start climbing, you won't be conditioned for the demands of the sport, so your forearms and biceps get pumped pretty easily. A great way to avoid this is to twist one hip into the wall and reach with the arm on the same side for your next hold. This will reduce the amount of pulling you have to do on the wall and capitalize on your joint's ability to rotate and bear weight. Crimping is the number one thing most new climbers struggle with in their first few months. To crimp properly, there are three positions you'll want to use. The first and most secure is the full crimp position. This is where your fingers are at 90 degrees and your thumb is placed on top of your pointer finger in order to lock the whole position into place. The second is the half crimp position where it's the exact same as the full crimp. You have your fingers at 90 degrees, but you don't put your thumb on top of your pointer finger to lock it in. And then the third is the open hand position where your fingers are not at 90 degrees. They are just dragging on the hold and your thumb is hanging off the side. All three of these positions are great on crimps. The full crimp and half crimp positions will be the most secure on the holds, but they do require a little extra tendon strength. So if you're starting out, I'd recommend using either a half crimp or open hand position. Side pulls are any hold that you can't pull directly down on and you're forced to come at it from either the left or right side. When you encounter a side pull, you want to position your feet on the same side that you're going to hold it from to get a good layback on it. For example, if your side pull is good on the left side, you want to also put your feet on the left side so you can put force through your hands and weight the hold, leaning hard in the opposite direction. Side pulls can often be a little balancey, so you also want to make sure that you maintain that hard lean by stabbing your foot on the wall if there isn't a foot chip available. When you're standing up out of a side pull, you want to also just keep maintaining that backwards lean and push hard with your feet to stand up. If you're lucky, underclings will be good holds that are easy to grab and all you have to do is push through your feet and stand up into the hold to hold it in the best position. But sometimes, underclings are positioned above your head or are slopey and hard to hold. If that's the case, there's more emphasis on your feet when it comes to holding underclings. You either have to dynamically step up from your feet and sort of jump so that your undercling is at your waist, or you have to hold a really bad hold for a second and push hard with your feet to stand up into a good hold. Most of the time, underclings are pretty easy to hold, the trouble can be getting in into position. One of the golden rules in climbing is that two hands are better than one. When you're jumping for a hold or trying to get a grip on a really slopey volume or sloper, two hands literally doubles the amount of strength you bring to the move. Matching is when you put two hands on the same hold. You can do this to reposition your hands, stabilize yourself on a balancy boulder, or like I said, bring more power and strength to a move. A layback, similar to climbing with straight arms, is a climbing technique where you relax your arms and lean back from the wall while you're climbing. This is essential on overhanging boulders because climbing with your arms flexed the entire time will absolutely tire you out and make you feel like every move is harder. You want to apply techniques from straight arms and twist your hips to the wall to reach up, just flexing your arm at the end to get the last few inches. Bumping is a technique where you move one of your hands to a different hold. You typically have a lot of weight on this hand, and so moving it is difficult. If you don't catch the hold you're going for quickly, there's a good chance you'll fall. Bumping is a great technique to use when you're stuck. Maybe the next hold you need to get to is more well suited for your left or right hand, so you're forced to bump that hand up to it. It's also commonly used when one hold you have is bad and the other is good, so you bump to get off the bad one. A Gaston is like a side pull, but you're forced to hold it from the bad side. You can't lean back on it, so you have to flare your elbow out and either force your body to the other side of it to turn it into a side pull, or hold the position long enough so that you can reach up to the next hold you're going for. A meat hook is a way to grab a climbing hold that requires very little hand strength but a good amount of wrist mobility. You essentially drape your hand over a hold and grasp it with your palm and thumb and you just add a little bit of pressure with your fingers to stabilize the position. This is a great position when you're tired or are working with blocky holds like these ones or volumes where the hard edges are easier to hold when you have more surface area on them. Pressing is a technique where you don't grab a hold and instead press against it to push yourself in one direction stand up in a balancey situation, or any number of applications. If a hold is too bad to grab, sometimes that's a sign you should turn it into a press. The overhead press is arguably the hardest press position out there because it requires intense lower back, core, and shoulder strength. 
Compression moves are all about your chest strength. It's a situation where you have two sloping holds that are impossible to hold individually. You need both hands to compress on the holds to make it work. Typically, your hands will be open, so you're not crimping or holding anything. You're just using friction and the force you're able to put on the hold. You press hard on each hold, squeezing your chest and flexing your hands. A mantle is when you push down on a hold to get on top of it. Usually you need to slowly press into a mantle by first flipping one of your hands so your forearm faces the wall. Push with your triceps to extend the arm using the lower hand for an added push. At the top, flip the lower hand so both are pressing down on the volume. In some situations, you might be able to dynamically explode from the bottom position all the way to the top without the slow press in the middle. Shoulder buster is a common climbing technique where you have two opposing holds that you have to hold at the same time. Essentially, it's a reverse compression move. You you need to flare your elbows out and press hard against both holds you have. You also want to be as high as possible on the holds, with your hands ideally at your chest. Shoulder busters can be really hard to hold, especially on an overhang when your shoulders droop and your hands are above your head. Dynos usually start at the V3 grade, so it's important to learn proper technique early. A dyno is when you jump from one hold to another, letting go of both hands to get the next hold. You want to eye up your target hold to get a better gauge of how far you have to jump. When you're ready, in one move, push through your legs and pull in on the start hold to stay as close to the wall as possible during the jump. If possible, try to catch your dyno hold with two hands to have the best chance of holding the swing. A barn door is more of a move you have to fight rather than use to get up a boulder. A barn door is when you have just one hand and one foot on the wall and you lose your balance, causing your other limbs to swing out and pull you off the wall like a barn door. To counter this, you can either stab your hand on a hold or volume that's part of the boulder, or the wall itself will work. A drive-by is a move where you have to go for a hold that is above and off to the side. You have to use your hand that's further from the hold. Typically, you're falling into the next hold because it's so far. Luckily, you have the other hand to support you as you cross into the drive-by hold, but you need to be prepared to tighten your core and stop the momentum. Campusing is when you climb without your feet. It requires a lot of upper body strength, as you'd imagine. And although in many cases climbers like to show off by campusing a boulder, it can be an invaluable tool in your arsenal if you're on an overhanging climb and the feet actually make your move harder. A hand stab is a great piece of hidden beta that can stop momentum and take pressure off your core. In this example, the hand stab is great at stopping a barn door, but I use hand stabs all the time on the wall to make precarious foot swaps easier or to slow the swing of a dyno. A shadow match or Houdini match is one of your only options when you have to switch hands on a hold, but the hold is too small or too bad to make room for a second hand. You place your free hand on top of your hand that's on the hold and very quickly pull into the wall, slide your bottom hand out of the hold and immediately replace it with your top hand. During the transition, there will be a split second where you're weightless and both hands are off the wall. This is only made possible by pulling into the wall to give yourself some space to fall back while your hands swap. A piano match is a tedious way of swapping hands on a hold where you replace each finger one at a time with your free hand. This is used in a situation where the hold is precarious and the dynamic shadow match would be too risky. To hold a sloper, you need to use as much of your hand as possible in order to maximize your friction on the hold. Since there's nothing to grab on the sloper, unless you can find a crimp on the edges or there's a divot, the best tool you have is your skin. You want to keep your center of gravity directly underneath the hold and fully trust your friction. In most cases, you won't really need to flex or pull too hard, you just need to stay low and trust yourself. Lock-offs are easy to get into, hard to fully execute. A lock-off is a move where you fully flex one of your elbows and reach with the opposite hand. The difficult part can be when you reach your next hold and it's a few more inches away. From here, you need to push that locked-off arm out of the comfortable flex position and try to extend it. Use your foot to help your arm shift in the direction as well. Thunderclings are underclings that only have space for your thumb. Often, you'll see a dynamic move where you have to stand up into a thundercling. All you need to do is hook your thumb under the chip, trying to wrap as much of it around the hold as possible to get the most control out of it. Although your fingers could also hold the thundercling, the thumb is often the easiest when you're coming at the hold from below because you can keep your elbow down. A dead point is a move where you have to be precise and hit a hold exactly where it's most positive. The smallest distance up, down, or to the left or right could spit you off the wall. Of course, we aren't robots, so we won't always be 100% accurate. To make dead points easier, pull into the wall as you aim for the next hold. Just like with dinos and shadow matches, this will give you a slight amount of air time to adjust your course and give your brain a second to figure out where it needs to coordinate your hand.
Fist jams are particular climbing moves where you once again rely on friction to stay on your hold. To do a fist jam, make a fist and insert it into your crack. Flex your fist and adjust it as necessary to find a somewhat comfortable position where you can weight the fist. If your crack is deeper, you can put your hand in the crack and turn it to make a fist after you already inserted it. A paddle is a variation of the single dyno where you use one or more intermediate holds to get to your final. There are tons of variations of the paddle as well, but in this example, I dyno to the intermediate hold with two hands and then use the momentum to do a quick campus into the finish hold. The key with paddles is to try to stick the intermediate hold first, and if your paddle is set well and the momentum begins to peel you off the hold, that's when you want to move to the next final hold. A rose is a fancy move where you cross one of your hands under your own arm to reach the next hold. The tricky part is identifying when a rose is necessary. Typically, it'll be in a situation where your holds are all in a horizontal line and you're unable to bump or match the middle hold, so you're forced to move your further hand. A stack is a situation where you put one hand on top of the other using your own hand as a hold to pull up with the power of two hands or to avoid doing a one arm move which can be very difficult to pull off in most situations. And then there's the mono, aka a one finger pocket. I certainly fall on the overly cautious side of injury prevention on the wall, so I steer clear of monos whenever I can, but if I am faced with a mono, I try to engage my finger and give it a little half crimp. 